Hey folks, this is the Aku Cosmopolitan. Welcome to another MPB team preview. We've covered the Nippon Ham Fighters and Yokol Swallows so far. Then we took a few weeks off for the World Baseball Classic. But now that opening day is coming right up this Thursday, we need to quickly talk about the 10 remaining teams. I obviously won't be able to release all the videos before the season starts, but hopefully all the previews will be finished by like week one or two of the season. So today, let's cover the Yokohama DNA Bay Stars. They finished second in the Central League last season with a record of 73-68-2. They had a 91 weighted runs created plus, ranking fifth, and they had a 103 FIP minus, ranking third. Of course, these are weighted numbers, so even though they were third in the league in Team OPS, their offense was actually much worse than that because they play in a hitter's park. Now, another thing that's important to know about their 2022 season is that they were barely a 500 team for the first half of the year. Uh, in fact, they were actually well below 500 for the first few months, but then as you began to see the Swallows fade, the Bay Stars got hot and skyrocketed up the standings. They went 28-13-2 in July and August, including a 17-game home win streak. Uh, and, and one more point of note, they played extremely well against the Hanshin Tigers all season long, finishing with a 16-9 head-to-head record against them, um, but they were, they were very bad against the Hiroshima Carp, going 8-17 in head-to-head -head matchups. Uh, though despite that great regular season record against the Tigers, their season came to an end in the playoffs with a series loss to the Tigers, who they had dominated all year. So... Overall, a successful year for them. They made the playoffs, um, and that's great when you consider they were coming off a last place finish in 2021, but still a pretty disappointing finish because they absolutely could have made a deeper run. With that said, what did this team do in the offseason to improve? Well, quite a bit actually. They traded for shortstop Yuta Kyoda in exchange for reliever Yoshiki Tsunada, they brought in new foreign imports, uh, pitcher J.B. Wendelkin and outfielder Trey Ambergy. And we have to mention the elephant in the room, Trevor Bauer. Uh, they signed Bauer very late, just a couple of weeks ago actually, which is why I don't have him in the rotation for this graphic, because I originally made this like a month ago. But obviously he projects to join the rotation maybe in like mid-April, after he takes a few weeks to, to ramp up for the season and get some... Uh, game action down on the farm. This is a guy who hasn't played in a professional league in, in like a year and a half, and he's also known to be very toxic for obvious reasons, which is why he couldn't land a job in MLB, but according to him, he's been training to pitch in a league again this entire time, and the expectations for him are, are very high. Um, from what I've seen, he's received nothing but praise from Japanese media because they just completely gloss over his past and pretend that it's not a big deal. But, you know, that doesn't change the fact that this move is kind of like throwing a grenade into the clubhouse. He is going to boost their championship aspirations, no doubt about it, just based on how, how good of a pitcher he is. But he may also disrupt clubhouse morale, especially when you um, consider how he's going to get along with some of the other foreigners on the team, many of whom are, are married. But, you know, I don't want to spend this entire video talking about Bauer, uh, especially because I know it's going to start a comment more, so let, let's go over the rest of the team. The Bay Stars franchise, historically, have never really been known to have great pitching, but they really improved last season, and this may be the best staff they've had in a long, long time. The ace is Shota Imanaga, who does have MLB aspirations, so we'll see what happens after this season, but he is a top two or three left-handed starter in all, in all of Japan. You could even make the case for him being number one. He always put up an ERA in like the low threes, high twos, but the, uh, well, with an exception of a down year in 2018, but he was on a whole new level last season with a career best 2.26 ERA, also threw a no hitter in June, so even if he regresses a little bit, you can still rely on him to be a true ace. Shinichi Onuki had, has a bit of a had a bit of an injury scare early in in camp, but he seems to be making a speedy recovery, and he was just excellent last season. Sub three ERA, above average strikeout rate. Uh, we haven't seen him put together back to back good seasons yet, so hopefully he's able to maintain that run for mention in 2023 again. 
Haruhiro Hamaguchi has been in the league for a while now, but he's still only 28 years old. Not a guy that's going to give you much volume because he hasn't even thrown 120 innings in a season since his rookie year, but um, he, he's very much an average pitcher. Not great, not terrible, just average. And I think average is not a bad thing in the pitching department. Does give you a chance to win every time out. Robert Gazelman joined the team late in the year last season. Only pitched in four games on the top team, but definitely showed a lot of promise in his final few starts, enough to where the Bay Stars were eager to bring him back. And I think he's definitely an upgrade from, from Fernando Romero. And then, um, now that they have Bauer, the last spot in the rotation is probably going to be highly contested between guys like Katsuki Azuma and Kentaro Taira, both of which have had a lot of success in the past, but need to prove themselves again coming off injuries. Um, you can also throw in names like Kenta Ishida and Taiga Kamichitani as well for potential rotation candidates. So there's a lot of depth here, and obviously that extends into the bullpen where Yasuaki Yamasaki is still the closer, active MPB leader in saves, has a pretty good chance to finish in the top two or top three all time actually in saves considering that he's still fairly young. Lost the closer, closer job there for a couple of years in 2020 and 2021, but Gained it back in style in 2022. I mean, posted a 1.33 ERA with 37 saves. Not racking up the strikeouts like he once did um, when he first broke onto the scene, but he, he's done very well to kind of reinvent himself. Edwin Escobar, reliable veteran lefty, uh, and a guy that can throw in the high 90s, which, which is really rare for a left-hander in Japan. Kenjiro Tanaka, another veteran southpaw. And then you get to the likes of Hiromu Issei and Taisei Irei, two young guys that have plus stuff and were able to uh, break out in, in 2022. Great strikeout rates. So top to bottom, I think the Bay Stars have, have great pitching and it has room to grow and get even better. As for the hitters, um, I, I mentioned at the top of the video that they underperformed last year only in 91 WRC+. Plus, but they do have some great bats. Catcher is a question mark for sure because they lost their main backstop, Mine, in the offseason. So it's probably going to be a revolving door between uh, Ito and Tobashira until top prospect Matsubo is ready. But I think every other posi position is pretty strong. Neftali Soto at first, one of the best one of the best foreign sluggers of this decade. Shugomaki at second, superstar in the making, almost a 900 career OPS in his first two seasons. I think he's a sneaky MVP candidate this year if the Bay Stars can win the pennant. Toshiro Miyazaki at third, one of the very best pure hitters in Japan, just doesn't strike out, always hitting around 300. Uh, and of course, they have another excellent pure hitter in left field with Keita Sano, won a batting title in 2020, and he's got pop too. Masayuki Kuwahara in center, didn't have the best year at the plate last season. Uh, it was definitely uh, disappointing, but... He was great two years ago, and he's always going to give you elite defense regardless of, of his hitting. Um, and then they have a bunch of options in right field. I think Taishi Ota deserves a shot to be an everyday player again. He had a really good like three or four year stretch with the fighters uh, not too long ago. But if it's not Ota, you got younger guys like, like Taishi Kusumoto or Tatsuo Ebina. And you also have foreigners Tyler Austin and Trey Ambergy. Um, we know that Austin, when healthy, is a top 10 hitter in all of Japan. It's just that he hasn't been able to stay on the field at all. Um, and he's going to miss a good chunk of this season, too. Um, and going back to the infield, because I skipped shortstop, young Kato Mori is supposed to be their shortstop of the future. But his development has, has stagnated a bit. Uh, and that's why they went out and got Kyoda, who gives Mori competition, along with Yamato, and hopefully pushes... Um, Mori to, to finally take that next step, but, you know, maybe, maybe Kyoda can have a resurgence and ends up being the everyday shortstop, who knows? He did win the Rookie of the Year in 2017 with Chunichi, uh, but then he's kind of fallen off since then. Um, that just about does it, though. Uh, the base stars on paper are a really strong team this year. The pitching is getting better, the lineup should rebound. Their only real major flaw, I think, is defense. With the exception of Kuahara and Soto, they have some pretty awful fielders, especially Miyazaki and, and Sano. So you won't be seeing them flash the leather much, but, you know, I think they can offset that as long as, as, long as their pitchers miss bats. 
and their offense puts enough runs on the board, um, I, I definitely think they're going to contend for the pennant at the very least uh, and have a very good chance to win it, as you'll see in my predictions. Uh, but all right, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more MPB content in English.